If you've ever burned your hand on a suppressor and you cried a little bit, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, guys. Like and comment. The comment section is out of control. Get in there. Tell me when you burned your hand and it's okay to cry, to cry about it. Guys, if you are looking to support the channel, the biggest support of the channel right now is Big Daddy Unlimited. Big Daddy Unlimited is like the Costco of the gun world, a famous line at this point. Is it worth it? Well, I think you're worth it, so why don't you get in there? Guys, we have a couple other great sponsors on this channel. We have The Dude Bag. The Dude Bag is a subscription service where you're getting some badass stuff. Discount code ONWARD, one of my new companies. You get some free shit, that'd be pretty cool. We of course have 80% arms, stick it to the man, they don't need to know what you have. Ladies and gentlemen, may I often forgotten, but most certainly not by me. Yo Tex, welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna be talking about a very cool rifle and that is going to be the Sig Virtus. And this is kind of an interesting um, little build here, but I'm not gonna get into it too far because we do have our resident expert on all things firearms, Sean. Sean, welcome to the channel, dude. What's up, buddy? Everyone. All things firearms. All things me. firearms, man. So, Sean, I don't wanna, I wanna take away too much of your thunder. You've been on the channel before. Yes. You are active duty, kind of, military. <laughs> <laughs> Going, getting towards the end, get, almost getting that yes. DD-214. We're approaching, fast approaching. It'll be uh, end of a 10 year career, so. Incredible. Well, tell them what you did in the uh, in the Army. Uh, so just standard infantry. Um, I went from Fort Bliss to Fort Benning, up here to uh, Fort, Fort Lewis. Benning. So yeah, yeah. I've, I've seen a little bit of all the worst places the Army has to offer, so. <laughs> what what jobs have you run in the Army? Um, so started, you know, actually as a striker driver. Yeah. Uh, that was a very glorious oh, good job. good times, yeah. Got to sleep all the time. Peeling, uh, like, spray adhesive off, and, like, strikers yeah, and stuff. It's, yeah, it's actually a great time. Uh, it's <laughs> a lot better than moving into a saw gunner and hating my life. Yeah, you're right. Uh, team leader, mm -hmm. uh, weapon squad leader, mm -hmm. uh, sniper section leader. Awesome, dude. Uh, I'm not, I don't have a sniper tab or yeah. sniper qualification, so I know everybody's freak out. <laughs> everyone's gonna freak um, out about that. Uh, ranger school, mm -hmm. tabbed. Nice. Uh, not an actual ranger. Yeah. People um, get get mixed up with the yeah. Band, there's the a huge scroll. yeah. There's a huge. We digress. Mis we digress. Well, we massively digress. Yes, but in any case, here. the Sig uh, Burst really interesting build. Yes. Do you want to tell us precisely what the hell we have right here? Because yeah, I'm gonna this take is, it from you first. Yeah, man. So you, all you do. No, you go ahead. So, <laughs> um, yeah, no, this is a really interesting uh, weapon. You know he's in the army because he clears it out first. <laughs> but what I love about this is that when I picked it up, you know, it's it's an M4. For everything that it's built to be, uh, it feels the same. Yeah. You know, uh, controls are the same, uh, magazine release, it's got, you know, ambidextric, so that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, bolt catch, it's all it's all there, you know, yeah. so there's nothing that's got to be relearned, retaught, anything like that. It's very simple to learn, uh, yeah. and it's probably one of the many reasons why some variant of the MCX is likely yes. going to be the next. Um, Weapon that's adopted, in my opinion. You know, we, I might be I, wrong. No, I completely agree. As as we've seen, M4s and all these different companies come through with their versions of mm -hmm. what could be the next. This, I think, has done it correctly. For sure. And now, um, what is this particular model that we have right so here? So this one, if I'm not mistaken, is the Rattler. Sure right? is. So 300 blackout, 5.5 uh, inch barrel. A um, couple interesting points. We talked about it earlier before. Yeah, for sure. Uh, with the 5.5 uh, inch barrel, really, the round is actually only touching. A little over three inches as it leaves, so ah, three inches is a perfect length. You know, <laughs> it's, a, it's an average, right? I'm trying. To, I, I hope I'm so. I'm trying to derail you. Sorry, go yeah, ahead. No, you're good. So, uh, but yeah, so you just imagine when that round's actually in there, um, you know, only three inches of that barrel is actually giving the rotation that you need. Yeah. Uh, so it's just something to think about when we start talking about, you know, what this is used for. For sure. At what ranges it's used for, because people would be like, oh, well, it should be able to shoot, you know. Well, it's it's not. A long range precision rifle. There's a purpose, so, there's plus and minuses to everything. Yeah, it's, there's, there's, yes, give and take. <laughs> everything is give and take, right? And yeah, speaking absolutely. Of give and take, I think I'm gonna so. take that rifle okay. back from you. So, this weapon, the SIG MCX Virtus, if you don't know, is a 300 blackout weapon. Uh, 300 is a really interesting caliber. We got it right here. So, got this bad boy right there. So, take this. It might be dangerous out there, <laughs> something along those lines. But in any case, we have a 5.56 casing that is necked up 
to a 30 cal projectile. In this case, this one is 220 grains, and it is a subsonic round. Yeah. That means it does not break the sound barrier. Now, we do have supersonic rounds. They're gonna be a little bit lighter, a little bit more power, a little bit more umph, and they're gonna break that sound barrier. So depending on what you're doing, you're gonna have, you're gonna be using either subs or supers. But what's nice is you can switch seamlessly between those two, depending on the type of mission that you're running. Now, in addition to that, the Virtus is really interesting. Um, it is a short stroke gas piston operated weapon. Specifically, it is very, very AR-18 like in design. I know you have a lot to say about that. Design. Yeah, I, I just, just one of the ways that uh, SIG has innovated really what everybody has tried to do and you know, everyone has their versions and everything, but I, I think that they really just nailed this. If you pull that all the way out, actually, the way it's just like an M4, right? So mm -hmm. it follows the charging handle. It's, it's all mm -hmm. the same. So again, the reteaching, like we were talking about, if it yeah. was adopted by the military, I mean, it's still very like it yeah, looks. Yeah. yeah, it looks like what's familiar. You have, you know, all the parts are there. Uh, but this system here is ingenious. Yeah. You know, you're putting that bolt midway through on your recoil system and mm -hmm. then it allows it to be trapped and guided by this receiver yeah still is an m4 in your hands but it is not on the inside it is incredible what it's, they've done with it in my opinion it's but. a very cool system and you know what's old is new again is definitely a phrase that i would use when yeah. referencing here go ahead i'm yeah. going to talk a little bit what's old is new again is definitely a phrase that you want to use when when discuss, discussing the mcx because there isn't anything that's how do we say it? Anything that's uh, so I'll let same you thing? No, that, it's the yeah. same thing. Like an M4. I just gotta make sure the bolts there. There isn't anything that's brand new about the MCX. Rather, the MCX builds upon well-known capabilities and operating systems of various weapons and brings them together to make a pretty good package. And of course, if you are a gamer, I am, I love games and stuff. <laughs> um, these have been in a lot of games and, and they're pretty iconic. So I think um, in the future, we'll likely be seeing a lot more of the Virtus. So you've seen an Escape from Tarkov, Warzone, all those things. Yeah. It's called the M13 in Warzone. It's a cool design. Let's go down, let's talk about it, man. Well, yeah, and then right before we do that, I think yep. the reason that this is seen in so many video games yeah. kind of going into that world yeah, go for it, it, is uh, the modularity, right? For sure. So, I mean, what better in a video game or in real life than b to be able to switch out everything on this rifle and still have it operate? Yeah, you're right. You know, so you're talking about different rails, suppressors, barrel lengths. Uh, back here is a Picatinny mount, so you can mount buffer tubes, folding, yeah. wire stocks. It just... The possibilities that you could take 15 of these, line them up next to each other, and they're all different. Yeah. But yeah, all the same is just such a selling point in my mind. Because you can't really, you can do it with an M4, but there are basic things that have to happen. You've got to have your buffer tube. Yeah. you got to have, you know, it's just, this just does it so well. You can modular, you know, the whole thing. Modular the whole thing. Modular, I agree. Modulate, no. whatever you uh, want to no, no, say. No, no, modular is fine, man. No, I agree. And, you know, compared to like the AR-15, which is a yeah. very modular system as well, yeah. um, this was kind of built from the ground up yes. to be a lot of those things. So I think they did some good stuff there. Now, doing what we always do, yeah. Going tip to butt. That's your favorite. It's my favorite. Do it. <laughs> it's the Navy's favorite. So, right here at the end, we do have a suppressor. So, typically with SIG guns and like the Rattler, you probably will end up using a SIG suppressor. Of, I mean, yeah, SIG suppressor of some type. We do have a Q suppressor in here. It's what I have. I love the Q suppressors. Um, there is a little bit of extra machining that needs to be done um, to help with the tapering on the Q suppressor, but they're great. But in any case, um, I would recommend a direct thread for this type of setup, which we'll talk about in a little bit, simply because I'm not going to be, um, you know, disconnecting the suppressor all that often, if at all. And that's due to the handguard that I chose to put on here. Because, like Sean was talking about, the handguard is modular, right? I can remove this fairly easily and put on a rattler handguard and then yep. have that suppressor sticking out without the handguard. But yep. of course, the problem that you run into when I don't have the handguard around that suppressor, if I have any amount of pressure when I'm shooting its barricade and I'm pressing down against that suppressor, it's I'm, flex. Yeah, I'm inducing that barrel flex and I could have some deflection of those rounds. So with that handguard, it does help uh, mitigate that as well with a um, hand guard that goes out past the suppressor. Yeah, I can have a light no shadow all that well, type of stuff. And it lets you Go actually, ahead, you know grab where you want to grab precisely, so, uh, you know when when these uh, Were released and they had their short, you know the rattler round or yep. uh, rail with a QD attached for a, um, a suppressor, you're like you know, the pole. You're you're back here. You're, you're tucked in and I get it It's supposed to be this foldable package at 16 inches yeah. folded But you know usability once you open everything up and want to shoot it 
I agree. It's it's you want to grab it here. That's what we we do. You know what I mean? So For sure. I think it's more stable. Yeah. Yeah. It just everything about it, you know, extends out here. But uh, this rail does a really good job of not interfering with what Sig did so well, which was, yeah. you know, having an easy. Uh, access to regulating the gas and all this they, sure. they really worked around it because you'll see that rails slap a rail on and then all of a sudden now you got a 16 screws later you can adjust the gas <laughs> yeah no you're you know. right dude no you're absolutely so, right and that brings you brings us to a great point which is how easy it is to modulate the amount of gas that you have going into the system yeah because um being able to kind of change the amount of gas going back, you're going to have different rounds. In this case, subsonic, supersonic. On the AR-15, there are different adjustable gas blocks, yes. but having it built in yeah. is way simpler. You can adjust the rate of fire, especially when you're running automatic, that yeah. type of thing. Lots of good things when you're running this particular um, just innovation that they've done. So I really like what they've done. It's very simple. In fact, we fucked with it today, yeah. uh, changing from supers to subs. So, you know, if you look right here, it's dummy proof. They put on the receiver itself, uh, you know, plus and a minus. So telling you if you need to gas up. Army this, proof, we could say. It's, it is army proof, <laughs> right? So you come in here and it's just, it's that simple. And now you've completely switched how this gun is gassed. Yep. And the rail is accessible. Like I said, it's it's done an amazing job that you don't have to, it's toolless. Mm -hmm. It is truly a toolless fucking adjusted rifle. I have cursed, I apologize. Yeah, you're, you're good, dude. <laughs> Cursing is fine on Grand Thumb. Yeah. Uh, of course, we have an air socket light out front here. Uh, great lights. I have it run back to our pressure pad. Uh, retained with an arcane, arcane uh, uh, concerted little band right there to help kind of retain everything. I like those bands quite a bit. A little plug for them, he's a good dude. Um, the barrels, so the barrel like you talked about before, yes. I think is pretty interesting. So it is short. It is. So, you know, 300 Blackout really thrives with, I mean, it can, it does not need a lot of barrel to stabilize, Correct. but nine inches is that sweet spot for, yep. for 300 Blackout, right when you get that maximum velocity and stuff. So a, Nine inch barrel on this, of course, it's gonna be longer. There's plus and minuses, and you're gonna get more velocity. And on top of that, you're gonna get better um, suppression, uh, both sound, flash, everything. Right. Um, that being said, this has been very reliable and worked very well for Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I think, again, when we start talking about the barrel lengths, yeah. it's where are we using it? Yeah. What, what are the purposes? So, sure. you know, is this. As the setup is right now with a five inch barrel on it, is this, you know, the infantryman's rifle? No, well, no, that's no, not, not yeah. what it's claimed to be. However, you know, pull this rail off two screws later, you know, you have a multi caliber bolt. Yeah, you're, you're done. You know, you have five, five, six, 300 blackout mm -hmm. and it's going to run. Uh, with any of those barrel lengths. No, so you're absolutely it's, right. It's a huge come up from an M4, which is you just kind of get what you get. You get what you get and you don't you throw know? fit. Yeah. Now, <laughs> and that brings us to another point is the overall application of 300 Blackout, right? So 300 yeah. Blackout's an interesting round. A lot of people think it's like the best of both worlds because a 300 Black, you can have a subsonic round. An AR-15 can, for the most part, not cycle a subsonic round reliably. Yeah. Uh, and then you can go to supersonics and that's pretty cool. But the thing about it is People think that 300 Blackout is, is better than 5.56 in a lot of ways, but they're even supersonic yeah. 300 Blackout doesn't have the range that uh, you know normal 5.56 does. So you're not quite getting the best of both worlds. There are trade-offs, and again, that comes yes. down to application. Yep. Are you going to be shooting beyond 300 about that point where those supersonic 300s are starting to have some trouble? If not, yeah, 300 is a great caliber. Yeah. And then, of course, the problem being, can you even get it right now because it's so expensive? And that is true. And and again, it, as a military rifle, yeah. right, this was did a really good job of not being built to be a 300 blackout. It's For built sure. to be, you know, interchangeable. Mm -hmm. So you're not stuck with it. Yeah. So, and I think that that's the most important thing is it, again, modularity. I, I think agree. that is the key in, in the future of firearms is that you have to be able to change this thing almost in every way, but still keep it the same. I agree. And you know, I, I don't feel like we can go any further without uh, taking a couple shots and showing you how yeah. gentle the recoil is and uh, how quiet this gun is. So we have a, a super sensitive microphone, um, really nice running to a really nice sound recorder. So it, it gets pretty accurate sound. So hopefully we can get some kind of good, uh, you know, real world examples of how this would sound. The problem of course being that I'm not really that fond of doing decibel uh, measurements because yeah. there's a lot that comes into that. But in any case, I, it should suffice it to say that it's very quiet. So let's go ahead and jump yeah, a little bit. Do it. So we're just gonna go ahead and do eyes only because this is hearing safe. So I'll switch you out here. Yeah, yeah thank you. All right, I'll fire a couple, then you'll fire a yeah, couple. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So what we'll do is 
I will fire a few rounds into the berm just so you can hear how quiet it is. It's just pretty much what you're hearing is the action itself. It is a ridiculously quiet gun. Sean, please. <laughs> I was hoping. So the biggest thing is that with the with everything that we're shooting here, as kind of an example, you can hear that the sound of the round impacting the steel is louder than the yes, than the whole function of the rifle. Yeah, the whole function of the rifle. So it is a ridiculously quiet weapon. So, so it's still hot. I know all that, all yeah. that smoke coming out. Well, it does a good job though. Like so, talking about the way that this gun is gassed. Um, we were talking about it earlier that it's like trapped really well into the magazine. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not blowing back in your face. For sure. So we've shot, you know, other uh, suppressed guns and everything like that, and it's just that constant blow back into your face and your For eyes. Sure. It's hot gas. It's not fun to it's shoot. Terrible. I can shoot this all day. I agree. All day. I agree. There, there is very little gas blowback on the. It's insane. Yes, yeah, it's, it's awesome. It's, it's yeah. well, it's well done. And it's, as you can see as well. Um, the amount of recoil is very insignificant. It's uh, it's pretty dang good, especially yeah. for a piston gun. You always have a little bit more push than like an AR-15. Yes. With a uh, with a piston gun, but this is um, extremely gentle. And, and again, Sig does some good things. I there were some definitely some problems with early um, Sig MCXs. Um, I think everyone kind of knows that. Yeah. But I think with their later models that we have right here, they've done a pretty good, good job. Now. That does bring us to a problem right here. So on our Ford Assist, our brass deflector right there, it's getting it's polymer right up there. As you can see, it's getting pretty chewed up. That's a part that can be swapped out. Um, probably not the best design choice, in my opinion. I think with um, many more rounds, we're going to end up just eating through that eventually. Yeah, I think it's actually, so we were talking about this piece as well. As if you can see, uh, this is interchangeable. So this Ford Assist can be removed, and most uh, of the Rattlers that are sold mm -hmm. uh, don't have that, that yeah. I've seen at yeah. least, and I could be wrong. But uh, it's just kind of like a polymer piece right here as your deflector, but there's no Ford Assist. Uh, and that's a whole other argument uh, as to the benefits. <laughs> but we'll in my opinion, it, yeah. I have you in ten years. I have used a forward assist almost in every moment I've shot an M4. Yeah, uh, it's just for me. It's just one of those things. Mm -hmm. It's it's trained into it. What are you, what are you losing by oh, having it? I, I, I agree, man. And you know, kind of going down from there into our controls. Controls are very M4 like, and in fact, yeah, I'm um, a little bit improved. The magazine release is a little bit longer, so it's very easy to hit. Um, that kind of brings me into a big point, which is magazines. Um, subsonic rounds do not run well through non yes. like 300 blackout specific magazines because they need a little bit more a, little, a couple of changes to make sure that they're functioning reliably. So if you're gonna be running subs. Um, the Magpul makes some. These are yeah. Lancers. Um, they work pretty well as well. Uh, you can overload the Lancers, so be careful with that. Yeah. But they are well done. And that kind of brings us over to the other side, which is our, we have a magazine release on that side as well, and our uh, bolt release right there. So very M4-like, very well done. I don't really yeah. have any complaints when it comes to no. um, any of the controls on this weapon. Yeah, if you took this lower um, mm -hmm. and really Aside from not having a buffer tube, yeah, um, AR. It's an AR. Yeah, pretty it's much. It's something that you know and that is easily, easily trained. And again, on our safeties right here, um, ambidextrous, right? So we have it on that side, and then a shortened one on the opposite side, which is perfect. So if I'm firing, you know, uh, long range or something like that, that allows me to engage that safety from that same side, or yeah. if you're ambi, uh, or if you're shooting lefty, yeah, perfect, perfect right there. Now, on this particular gun, we do have a Geisley trigger on it because I've previously already done a ghosting of the trigger of the regular MCX trigger, okay. which is quite good. So for the first time in Grantham history, me and Sean are going to ghost that trigger together. So he's gonna put his finger right over mine. and see if we can, oh, God, that's, 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 that's intense. That's, you, yeah, am that's I really, pulling or are you pulling? You can pull. Okay. All right, so we get into it. So we have a, about three millimeters of play and we have a, <laughs> wow. okay, get off me. Wow. <laughs> it's nice. Wow. Okay, feeling that one more time right oh, no. there. Was it good for you? It was really good. It was me. good okay. for me. Feeling it one more time. You got like hobbit hands, dude. Just like, <laughs> okay, uh, go ahead and do it again. Okay, go on. Yeah, about three millimeters of play. 
We have that let off. That is nice. Yeah. Uh, Dynasty triggers are, of course, incredible. Uh, I would have never have anything really bad to say about them. So um, they do make them for uh, MCXs now. So that is pretty cool. Sig grips. Very yeah, yeah simple yeah. man. But again, modular. Modular. That's gonna be the that's gonna be the ticket item for yeah. this rifle right here is modularity. For sure, man. And that brings us to we have QD points on both it built into the lower and yep. into the handguard right there, so that makes your life easier. And then finally to what Sean was talking about last, we have yep. the stock and 1913 is an awesome attachment method for a stock. It, it is. And again, so SIG offers uh, you know, they have this version, they have a skeletonized version. Yep. Um, they have the wire, so you know, yeah, you actually positioned in. here. So you have the M4 sock, you yeah, have everything. They have the two position wire stock. Um, again, and it's all about what we're talking about the actual uh, length of this rifle uh, without a suppressor. When you start folding the stock up, you're, you're 16 inches. Yeah. Um, fold it into a bag under the seat of your car, whatever it was designed to do. Um, you know, and you just change it from there. Buttstock. And then actually, yeah. for being not a standard M4 buttstock, it feels uh, good. And being so thin, yeah. I actually really like it. I like it. Stock. It reminds me of the BCM stock, which I've always been kind of a big yeah, fan of. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of that stock. So they definitely did a great job. I mean, this is a cool gun. You it know, is it, very. It definitely has an application. Uh, you know, figure out if it's good for you. But I mean, honestly, I do like the SIG MCXs quite a bit. Um, I kind of was a little bit disappointed in the first MCX that we that we ever got. It's it's. But uh, I'm sorry. You have to. I can't. Army NCO, but um. You know, th these newer versions are pretty awesome. You know, we've talked about it enough. So what we're gonna do now is kind of show you how quiet this thing is. We're gonna put the camera down range. We're gonna fire from 20, 40, 50, 60, 100. Okay. And then we'll get get up there with the camera so the camera can hear how long it takes for a subsonic rat yeah. to travel because there is not a lot of power. No, it's like shoot. If it, it feels like shooting a 45. It does, and it, it does it have. It really a, does. What's the power of the 300 black, uh, like a subsonic 300 blackout approximately? Um, from what I've seen, it's like about the same as shooting a nine millimeter yep. out of a five inch barrel. Yeah. So you're hitting the velocities are different, but when you talk about uh, impact at a hundred, yeah, uh, you're dealing with about the same force. So it's yeah. it's gonna do the job. It's, it's gonna just, do the, it's it's gonna get there. It'll get there. It'll get there. Give it some time. It'll, for sure. So uh, you don't understand with a, with a a subsonic. A subsonic is a subsonic. It can't go yeah. any more fast. So you're pretty much. Uh, uh, going all off grain the the grainage of the slug itself and of yep. course the shape of the round So how effective is it, but enough talking? Yeah, let's get shooting. Now. Absolutely 10 yards All right 10 yards will 40 yards Sixty yards. Ninety yards. One hundred and twenty. Did you hear it? <laughs> did you hear it? <laughs> I didn't. Okay, so oh. we. Yeah, we'll so I had to adjust. <laughs> Sorry. You're good. So. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we're gonna shoot a. We're gonna shoot a like 110, 120 ish. All right. Um, I just want, I want you guys to hear the uh, flight distance on the uh, subsonic 300. It's kind of cool. Yeah, it's, it's super cool. It's cool. All right. Hopefully, I can hit it. Oh, of course. <laughs> you have to load around. Oh. It's kind of cool. <laughs> you got that flight time. It. I, <laughs> I can't see it, but I can see I it. swear to God, I can hear that round like through the air. It's How like did I get there? Donald Trump. He's like thick. <laughs> it's a thick boy. It's just screaming through the air. That thing is. Yeah. Dude, hopefully you don't fuck this up and miss. I know. <laughs> oh. Hold on. Okay, you left me. Oh, with you got rounds. You good? You left me with a couple. All right. Oh no. Oh no. That's so cool. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Let's. Okay. Do you have another, Do you have more subs? I do. Okay. Can I have some? <laughs> <laughs> um. 
So what we're going to do right here is we're going to fire it at the berm so you can hear the, maybe you can hear the impact in the dirt. We can hear it. It's a, it's like a foam. Yeah. yeah. So we'll see if you guys can hear it. All right. Let's give it a shot. Whoa. There it is. It's the Call it's of Duty a, hit marker. It's it's exactly, a, exactly what it is. That, and that is where the Call of Duty yes. hit marker sound came from. I think so. Do that think is so? no way. Dude. That's gonna be okay. Hold on. It does really sound like that though. Here, fire at the yeah. berm. That really does sound like it. <laughs> Yo, that is. It is. That is what if it is. If you have the full auto and doing it, like make sure you edit in the little X's as you. That's hit. uh. That's like extreme PTSD for me from dying in Warzone all the time, but... Yeah, that's why I don't play it anymore. <laughs> no, for real, though. I only play Halo. Uh, we'll take it to the rocks. We'll come over here. This is about 80 right here. It's a little bit quicker uh, at 80, but you're definitely kind of getting towards the end, getting past 120 with a subsonic. Something what to think about. It's doable. You're hitting. It's doable. Yeah, it's, it's, in here. it's too much fun. It is too much. Yeah. yeah, it's well, it's too it's it's too easy. It's not hard at all. Yeah. Well, I think that about kind of sums it up for the MTX right there. Yeah, I think so. Um, this is a cool gun. It's it's way too cool i wish if this came into the military i'll be happy i would stay not really no I you're gone you're leaving no, don't out. say that I you're gonna go work for mcdonald's way. dude i am it's gonna That's be happy true story it's gonna be happy doing it ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for watching um if you're gonna get a gun like this it's cool but yeah. if you don't get training none of it will matter so get training tons true. of great guys get training from who do you recommend uh well if you're in the pacific northwest uh epsilon northwest yeah. is an awesome resource uh completely free um, we just, we, we want to really, you know, preach that if you're going to own something like this, it's awesome. You can own whatever you want, but you know, put some training behind it and, uh, and then give that training to others. So it just better builds the community and it's a safer community. I agree, man. Um, beyond that, you got, you know, Bear Solutions, Cogworks, oh, all, do, all good dudes, get training. Yep. That's what matters. What makes you look cool. Yeah, it does. It is important. Safety is cool. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have nothing else for you. Stay tuned for more in the future. I've got nothing else to read. All right, final thing. <laughs> final thing for you. Sean has incredible wisdom for you, which he will now impart into okay. unto you. I think we can go in the realm of, you know, we've talked about uh, mental health a lot on this channel. I think that yeah. we've had other yeah, people talk about it. Uh, talk about physical health. I mm -hmm. think that they go hand in hand. And it's really easy right now, especially with COVID and staying home a lot to fall out of shape. To get the wrong type of thick. Yeah, oh yeah, well, I don't know about that. Okay. But going back into the gym can be hard, uh, just mentally to get yourself in there. So if you're in shape, you wanna you know stay in shape and then it also makes you feel good, look good. So I think this, you know, get in the gym as they open back up and if they don't, run, push-ups, you know, just stay in some kind of physical shape. I agree, fantastic knowledge. As I chase you while we run. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. You know, if you guys have gotten this far, Survival Dispatch. Survival Dispatch is a repository of survival information and uh, it's important. As a SEER guy, you gotta get in there, you gotta do it. Uh, finally, big shout out to my Patreon people. You guys rock, you have made this channel incredible. We can't thank you enough. We got nothing else for you, for real this time.